Hey guys, I hope you checked out my really quick walk around view of the new 2021 BMW 5 Series. And now we're here with a full review, a full review of the exterior, interior, engine performance, and all the other really cool details of this 2021 um, new 5 Series. And of course, this is the face of the model. We have the key right here. This is a regular BMW key. And let's go take a look at this new model. Okay, guys, we are here with the 2021 BMW 5 Series facelift. Now, this one is the 540i xDrive model. Of course, this one is the M Sport package, as you can see, more aggressive um, lower bumper right there. Now, I have the key right here, as you can see, as we do have the M Sport package, we got this really cool um, the M logo right there, which is kind of nice to see. And let's just show you guys some of the cool things that BMW has done with the exterior. Now, I've always been a really good fan of the BMW 5 Series, um, and I think this one's actually bringing it closer to what it, I think the glory days of it. It's giving it more of that boxier, more of like hard edge design that the old um, great 5, 5 Series of the past used to look like. And I think with the big things that they did up front really do help with that. Now, first up, we can see that BMW has um, redone the grill section. Now, it's not that giant new kidney grill um, that uh, the new M3 and the new M4 is gonna have and the entire new 4 Series is actually gonna have. But instead, it's this um, continued with a slimmer kidney grill design, but they did just make it a bit sharper and a bit harder around the edges. And I honestly think it does a really good thing for the 5 Series. It makes it feel a bit more um, refreshed and a bit more premium. Um, as you can see, these do have the active flaps behind them. Um, they do open at higher speeds to help cool the engine. Now, speaking of the engine, under the hood of this 540i, we have a twin power turbo 3 liter straight six with a new 48 volt mild hybrid system. Now, this mild hybrid system it is going to produce a little bit more um, boost with the um, engine, help reduce turbo lag, and it's going to um, help power things like the AC and all this stuff inside without um, putting strain on, on side of the engine. Um, another really nice thing that BMW has done with this facelift is new headlights. Now this one are the LED headlights. Um, they do come with like matrix LED style design, but I don't think those are available in the United States due to our regulations, unfortunately. Regardless, these are really nice looking and they all pretty much look the same. Um, you can see these new L-shaped LEDs right here. It has this nice 3D style that they did. It's kind of like this crystal effect going on. I think it looks really cool. Um, I do know if you get the hybrid models of the 530E or the 540E, um, this entire top piece is blue. I think it's also like that on the M5 too, which is actually pr um, pretty interesting. Um, but otherwise, I think it looks really nice. And another cool thing to point out up front is that with these new headlights, they kind of integrated the bumper more to um, blend them in with the headlights, kind of like what they did on the updated 3 Series. Um, and it kind of like uh, presents the grill to you instead of just like having it all slapped on. It's more... Um, Put together i think is a good way to put it um of course this is a bmw so we're not going to get that many fake vents at all everything up here is fully functional and open um this is all open of course right here this is all functional and we do have an air curtain going around the side of the car too now coming around to the side this air curtain does continue i can show you guys right here you can see i can stick my fingers right through here so the air is going to flow around and it passes over the wheels um, through back here and comes out through this little um, side piece right here, which is in finished in black. This does have the shadow line exterior package. So of course, all of the um, trim around the um, windows is black and I think it looks really nice. But that, of course, like I said, this is functional. So the air is just gonna pass along the side of the new five series. Now I do really like these wheels. These are the 19 inch M Sport wheels. Um, it has like this machined aluminum finish on the front with a nice um, black um, interior portion. I think it looks really good. Honestly, I don't really think you need 20 inch wheels. Uh, this is just perfect. It fills the wheel well up really well. And it really makes those um, brake calipers finished in blue right there look massive, which is something really cool to see. Um, of course, with the 5 Series, they have updated some stuff under the hood. Up front, we have a, it's a double wishbone suspension, and now back there's a multi-link setup as well. And coming around to the rear, we can see that BMW has changed the taillights. Um, these are the new 3D effect um, LED taillights. I think they look really cool. I think we can get them to flash a little bit right there. There you go. Look at that. It has this really cool 3D effect. I think Porsche started doing this ages ago with the Macan, but it looks great here. Um, some people said it looks like an Accord or something else or a Lexus or something. I think it just looks like a modern inter interpretation of the regular 5 Series lights over there. Get that to zoom in right there. So I think it looks a lot better. Definitely modernizes the V5 Series. Thankfully, also BMW has included real exhaust tips 
right there. There's, of course, one on each side. And this is a little, like, faux diffuser thing going on over there um, down the back. Now, this is the black carbon um, exterior paint. You wouldn't really know because once you look in the sunlight, it's kind of hard to show on camera, but it looks almost blue a little bit, which is really cool. It's one of my favorite BMW paints, I think, right now. And, yeah, I would definitely get this color if I got a BMW 5 Series. Um, coming around to the rear, we can open the trunk with button on the key. I think we can. Yes, we can. Just press and hold that to open the trunk. And we have a pretty nice, decent amount of space back here. So coming inside a little bit more, you can see all that nice space going on. It's really sunny today. Sorry, guys, if it's not focusing. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of space going on over here. We have um, a storage pouch on this side. You can see... Of course, there are buttons up here if you want to close and lock the vehicle as well. And the seats do fold down. If you want to fold seats down, you just pull these little levers right here, one on this side and one on this side, and you can pull those down um, to have some more cargo space going on over there. I'm pretty sure we don't have a spare on this model because it doesn't look like the floor will come up, unfortunately. But yeah, so we can just close it by pressing this button right here. And it is power, of course, which is a nice luxury feature. Awesome. Now, like I said, guys, this is the 340i model. And then for 2021, as you can see right here, BMW has included a new eBoost 48 volt mild hybrid system for this three liter twin, um, twin power turbo straight six. It's just one twin scroll turbo, um, so no two turbo. So to open the hood, we're gonna take a look at the engine. We should pull this lever two times, unlatch the two hood latches, close the door, and let's come around to the front to check out this engine. So of course it does have gas struts which is a nice feature we don't have to um, use any prop you can see um everything's really pretty much covered up over here so we're not gonna really be able to see all the cool stuff underneath but um yeah it's just bmw's engine it has a nice engine cover with this little like fake carbon fiber trim stuff going on over there and like i said before it does make 335 horsepower i think around 350 pound feet of torque this one is the x drive model so we have on um, all-wheel drive of course you can get it in rear wheel drive only and like I said before, it does have that 48 volt mild hybrid system. Um, so it's like an electric motor, um, a small electric motor and a small battery pack, able to recoup some energy from the brakes. And it can also send power to like the AC and a lot of the interior accessories so it doesn't put strain in the engine. It also helps to reduce turbo lag and that type of stuff as well. It's a really cool little system that they're implementing on a lot of their models now. You can just close the hood. Really nice solid front going on right there. And now, I think you guys want to hear some exhaust note stuff, so I'll set that up for you guys so we can hear the straight six growl. Okay guys, now we're gonna take a look at the interior of the 2021 5 Series. So I have my key right here, of course, the nice um, M -go badge right there. And I can keep it in my pocket actually, so we don't really have to use it. Also, if you have an iPhone now, you can actually just use your phone as a key with Apple's new car key system. So let's say you have your iPhone right here, pretend this is an iPhone, you would just um, tap it to the door and it would unlock, which is a really cool feature. But right now I do have my key in the pocket. Of course, we do have a comfort access feature, so we don't really need to use it. Just put your hand behind and the door will unlock. And we are on the interior. Now, BMW hasn't changed that much stuff for the interior for 2021. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit. But right now, we'll just look at the door panels. Now, BMW does a really good job in the interiors in the first place. So we're nothing really surprised right there. This one does have the black um, Dakota leather interior. You can also get Napa leather and also a Sensatec um, vegan option as well. Um, this one has this really nice aluminum trim going along the door panels with this um, more of a uh, lighter wood. It is glossy finish. You can get a whole bunch of different options for the trim on the inside. Um, other than that, there's really not much to see on the door panels. Really nice stuff in general. We do have these really nice Dakota leather um, seats, as I said. Of course, they're in black. Really comfortable, really nice bolstering going on. I love what BMW did with the stitching. It has this really cool, like, multi-stitched effect. And on the bottom, they actually have a little bit of, like, this white piping going on. Which is really cool actually and it gives the seats a little bit of a flare of course there's loads of different options you get like an ivory color um, a cognac color and a whole bunch of other stuff if you don't want black 
So now we're gonna step inside. I'm gonna put my foot right over this beautiful um, embedged BMW sill right here. And of course, an aluminum. Step inside. Close the door, a nice solid thunk. Ah, really nice in here. So we are on the interior of the updated 5 Series. So if I put my foot on the brake right here and press the engine stop start button, it should turn right on. Awesome. Of course, now we are inside the 2021 5 Series. So what did BMW change? Well, outright, the main new things are these two new screens right here. This is a 12.3 inch um, digital cluster. It's bigger than, I think it was a 10.5 inch system beforehand. Um, this is our live cockpit um, professional system. And I believe it is standard now, actually, which is really nice. Um, of course, we got on the M Sport package, so we do have a little M badge right there. And if I do put it into sport mode right here, you get a little M badge right next to the speedometer too. So <laughs> I don't know if it's me, but I think it's trying to entice you to speed a little bit. Um, with that 335 horsepower, that won't really be a problem. Now, um, this screen is actually iDrive 7, so this is their upgraded system. We're gonna get to that in a little bit. Now to the rest of the interior, um, uh, it has pretty much the same treatment as the door panels. Of course, we have this really nice aluminum finish going across, and of course, this nice wood trim. As you can see though, it is really, um, <laughs> reflective with the sun going on. Um, there's a lot of reflections because it's all really glossy materials and it's, it could blind you a little bit. This entire panel right here is aluminum. So it might blind you a little bit as you can see it's doing with the camera right now. Um, here's a better angle of that. You can actually now get um, Sensitech on the um, dashboard up here. This one's the regular injection molded plastic. It doesn't feel bad, it's very soft touch. But of course you can get um, the Sensitech material. So it's kind of like that faux leather material. Um, it has some nice stitching going on on the dashboard if people would like. Uh, the rest of the interior is pretty much the same as the pre-facelifted model. Um, coming down to the center console, you have your iDrive controls as usual. Um, of course, you do have the um, fingerprinting thing going on there if you want to like draw for navigations and search results. Um, on the center console, we have your typical BMW shifts that are going on here. Nothing that new. It is wrapped in, I think this is leather on the back, so it, make, it does make it feel really nice. Um, we do have some gloss black going on, of course, more of that nice aluminum and wood trim. Open this panel up right here. We have a wireless charging pad right here, which is really nice. And this is good because you do have um, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a nice feature to have. Um, so you can just drop your phone here and you can use your Apple CarPlay and all that stuff when it works. <laughs> um, of course, we have an extra USB port right there, two cup holders and your 12 volt socket. Of course, we close that up. And coming onto the centerpiece, we have these nice folding doors. Not that deep of a center console, nothing too different. It is nice and lined with felts, and this has a little light right there. Other than that, we do have a USB-C charging point right there. Kind of weird how they don't have a regular USB, but they do have one up there, and they give you one here. I, I don't know, they're kind of trying to move into the future, but in the weird places, but at least we can see they are progressing with that stuff. Um, coming over to the steering wheel. Now this is the M Sport steering wheel option as we do have the M Sport package. I love this steering wheel. It's really thick with the leather. has a nice soft yet also like grippy um, feeling at the same time. This one of course is heated with your heated steering wheel button right there. And of course the M badge and this nice aluminum trim going around it as well. I, I just love this steering wheel. And of course we do have the paddle fit shifters right here as you can see. Um, really interesting. They only put like the aluminum metal on the front and the backs are plastic. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's this nice soft touch plastic, so it's not cheap, but you know, it'd be nice if the whole things were metal. I know a lot of people are doing that now. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's not that much different on this interior. Um, we can go over to the cockpit though. So they did of course make this bigger. It's now 12.3 inches. So definitely starting to rival some of the other um, systems in the class from Audi and uh, Mercedes, but it's not that good. Um, it looks cool sometimes, but you can't really customize it at all. The only ways to really change anything is if you change your drive mode. So you have Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. Um, of course, in the Sport setting, you can go from Standard, Sport Plus, and you can go to your individual settings and configure that stuff right here. You can change things like the steering, the engine, the transmission, um, to whatever you want. So you don't have to have it in these set settings. Of course, Eco Pro stuff is also available if you want to drive a bit more economy um, style. Of course, this does have the 48 volt system, so you are going to get a little bit of regen actually from the brakes. And um, yeah, it'll help improve the fuel economy. Not by much though. Um, and then comfort's your everyday style, but I prefer to stay in sport all the time because I like to be a little bit more sporty. Um, but yeah, the customization here is 
down to the minimum. Like this is it. Like it changes with the drive modes. Um, this button now actually controls your heads up display. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. I don't think the camera's gonna focus on it. Oh, there you go. But if I press the button, you can get like options to change the radio stations. Um, other than that, it's not much up there. So it's nice that you have a digital gauge. I just wish it would have more customization like Audi and Mercedes offer. Um, other than that, the iDrive 7 system. Now let's get to that. So this is a massive 12.3 inch display now. It matches the virtual cockpit that they both upgraded as well. And you know, it's your typical iDrive. Not much has changed. There are a lot more connectivity features. Um, some improved navigation stuff with 3D. And this one doesn't have the full safety suite, but if you press this button right here, it will um, go to your safety systems. Now this one does have things like, if you go into config, you can see, forward closing mitigation, lane departure, active blind spot, but you can also get things like the adaptive cruise control with traffic stop start up to level two autonomous um, systems and stuff. So if you want that, you can get it as a package, I believe. Um, otherwise, it's your typical iDrive stuff. I do like how when you go into the vehicle settings and everything, you do show like the 5 Series right there. So it kind of shows like your car, which is really cool. And you know, just take your stuff through all these things. Typical iDrive stuff. Um, it does have gesture control. As you can see, it keeps um, notifying me. So if I Gangs do this, you can turn off the radio station or something. Um, I know there's a whole bunch of other gesture controls, like flip screens and answer calls. You can wave your hand to answer and hang up a call. It's all gimmicky stuff, but you know, people do like it. Um, another cool thing I do like with BMWs is this entire panel is touch active. So as you can see, as I swing my finger across, it scrolls through all your assigned radio stations and stuff, which I think is really cool. And I do like how BMW does separate their climate controls down here um, from the infotainment system. I don't like how a lot of manufacturers just shove all the climate control stuff into the infotainment system. And then you can't, you know, you have to go into it. Sometimes it doesn't load up to that long, but this one works really well. And I do like, everything's really quick. So as you can see, as I scroll through these screens, super responsive, it's like, as it's happening in real time. So I do like how good the system does work. And it's very simple to use. It's not very difficult actually. I swipe down from the top, you have like a little widgets and stuff. You can even turn the screen off if you don't want to see it, which is nice, as you can see I did right there. I think the tap, you just press your drive. Yeah, you just press the controller back there to turn it back on. Um, with the navigation stuff, you go to navigation. Um, as you can see, you know, usual BMW navigation stuff. If you want to search, you can um, scroll here with your finger. You can write, which I'm not really good at. I'm not a fan of that one, actually. I prefer to just use a voice activated control. So I'll we'll just do this. Let's see. Uh, navigate to the nearest Dunkin' Donuts. I have found several destinations. This one. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this so I can show you guys some of the stuff going on the heads up display. It does give you that turn by turn arrows right there. As you can see, it's really cool with the distance marker. And it does show, um, of course, your navigation screen in the center display with your speed limit stuff, your route and everything. So it's a nice integration of it. I'm definitely not gonna lie about that, but um, it could be better. Of course, you do have um, uh, distance control for the screen. So in a little bit, all these things will like turn away. And as soon as you bring your hand over to the screen, it'll like all appear again. So watch as I bring my hand close, it all appears again. So it knows how far my hand is coming to the screen, which is really cool as well. We're just gonna end this so it doesn't um, bother us the whole time. Yeah, really, oops, sorry guys, <laughs> but uh, that's really cool. Um, they have kind of done a little bit of like a frameless mirror design over here, which is really nice. I wish it would be completely frameless like on some models, but it's good enough. And up here we have our usual BMW um, lights right here for the interior passenger lights. And we do have a moonroof right here. So to open that, we just press this button back and we can open that up. I'm gonna keep it closed right now because it's hot today and you guys can't really see if I have that open. Yeah, so I think we're pretty much done for the up, up front. Nothing that much other else to see. I think we're gonna go take a look at the back seat room, headroom and leg room, and we'll show you guys a bit of that stuff now. Okay guys, now we're gonna take a look at the rear seats. We're gonna open the door right here. This also actually has um, the touch sensitive buttons behind it. So if you wanna unlock just the rear door, it will also work with that if you have your key in the pocket. Open up this rear door, you have a nice big entry space going on right here. Of course, in the sides, of course, we have the nice same touches as the front. So we have this nice stitched um, leather going on here. Um, I think this is a soft touch material up top. Again, the wood, um, the ambient lighting bar you can see across right there, and this nice aluminum trim. So stepping in, we're inside right now. Let's close the door. Awesome. 
So now we're inside and it's a little bit dark right now because we have this window sticker here. But uh, leg room wise, it's still really good. So underneath we do have a little um, footwell cut out for your feet. I think I have a pretty decent amount of room right here. Massive amount of leg room for this. Um, you can see I have like two, three, four, five, four inches of leg room right here. Let's see my fingers. Um, you do have a little parcel shelf up here to put some stuff in. It is wrapped in this nice like sense of textile material. Also one on the passenger seat as well. And we do have heated seats back here. Three stage heated seats on both sides. Um, you do have two USB-C ports right here. So I hope you have a USB-C charger. Um, a little cubby hole. It's actually pretty deep. And of course, a, tw a traditional 12 volt um, outlet right there. And of course, your little air vent system. Um, the seats are pretty comfortable. Uh, the backs are a little bit upright. Um, I can't really show you this <laughs> I'm sitting, but they're really like, straight up. There is a nice curve going on into it. So it does like feel nice to the contours of your back, but it does feel a little bit strange. I'm not going to lie. Um, you do get the same like nice materials back here too, with this nice stitching in the center. Um, the piping and everything but it is more of like a bench style seat back here um so just if you don't like that just keep that in mind of course in the center console if we turn around of course it's ditched in leather and we do have a cup holders right here i'm pretty sure press the button yeah cup holders put that away and um you can fold the seats down for the back pass through as well put that up headroom wise i think we can turn this around yeah headroom wise I'm doing pretty good with headroom. Now there are a bit some cutout stuff because we do have the sunroof going on. Um, headroom wise, I have about, put my head back, about an inch and a half or an inch of headroom, which is not really that bad. Uh, I was in the two series Grand Coupe um, earlier and that has some awful headroom, but that was a really small car. Back here, usual stuff. I don't think this one has a sunshade. It, does, it definitely doesn't have the sunshade on the side. And it doesn't have one back there. I feel like that's on the higher trim models if you want that as an option as well. But other than that, it's a really nice place to be back here. You do have some ambient lighting in the center if you want to turn that on. I don't really need that all the time, but it's nice to see that as a feature. And, you know, grab handles, usual stuff. Again, BMW's build quality is great. Everything feels premium, the metals, the woods, the um, leathers, materials, all the carpeting. Everything's really solid as usual. But yeah, that's pretty much it with the interior. So yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this review of the 2021 5 Series right here. Again, this is the 540i xDrive model, and we are over at BMW of Ridgefield in Ridgefield, Connecticut. If you guys are looking to buy a new BMW or have any interest in any of the new BMW products, definitely go give them a check out on their website, or if you live in the area, come check them out in person. Now, we did check this one out, and we also compared it to the um, last um, pre-facelifted 540i xDrive as well, so make sure to check that video out as well. And also make sure to follow us on Instagram, um, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm at all corners. We can find us everywhere. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting us. And stay tuned for more.